Right, new topic. Um, this is section 21.2 in the book, Splitting Fields. Um, 21.1 <laughs> was ridiculously long. Um, it's been like three weeks. Uh, it's like 80% of the chapter. I don't know why it's split like that, but anyway, here we are. So, um, so let's do an example. So splitting fields, um, so when I say a polynomial splits, I mean it factors into degree one polynomials. So um, take x cubed minus two, uh, thought of as a polynomial with rational coefficients. Um, it, it, it has three roots in the complex numbers. Um, I know I know it has three roots um, because I know the, the complex number is algebraically closed um, and it has degree three and I I can tell that they're going to be different. For example, if you remember, the derivative would tell you um, if you have a double root, it would be a root of the derivative as well. Uh, but anyway, there's there's no cubic roots of two in the rationals. That's clear. So um, so what do we do? We add a cubic root of two. So um, of course, the cubic root of two is the root of this polynomial. So um, x cubed minus two is a is a multiple of of this degree one polynomial, uh, and well, we should we should divide them. I do this in my head, probably. This is it, right? Yeah. Uh, and you can check I did it correctly by multiplying it out. So uh, so that's how x2 minus 2 factors over this field. Now I'm allowing this as a cubic root of 2 as a coefficient. So, um, so all of a sudden it factors more than it did before. Um, So now I wonder, does this factor as well? Uh, or is it irreducible? Um, I mean, it's degree two. So, I mean, I have two options. Either it's a factor, the factors have to be one, both of them, or, or it's just irreducible. And I mean, I know, I know what I'm supposed to get. Uh, if you remember, you know, how to find the three complex roots of a number. Uh, they're all rotated by 120 degrees. So I know they're not gonna be real numbers. Uh, but I can also, if I don't remember this properties of complex numbers, I could just uh, do it. Uh, just find the roots, use the quadratic formula. So this quadratic polynomial, um, the root, its roots are um, minus b plus minus the root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2. Um, And this is, so there's a cubic root of four there. So that's a negative, that's the square root of a negative number. So there's no roots there. Um, but actually I can, I can simplify it more. I can pull out a cubic root of two from everywhere. It's in, it's in a square 
in the square root. So, so you might recognize this as a cubic root of uh, one. <clears throat> this is, um, these are these two complex numbers. Uh, we'd have to value one, but I mean, doesn't matter. The point is, these are not real numbers. Um, but every number I can make with the cubic root of two is a real number. So, uh, so this is reusable. because I just found the root time and I saw they're, they're not in the field. And it's degree two, so that's enough. Um, okay, so this has not split, uh, this bottom is not split into linear factors over this field. So what can I do? Uh, just add a root of this polynomial. So Oh, what am I doing? I should, I've been doing round brackets the whole time. I don't know why. All right. Um, instead of just adding the cubic root of two, um, add this at the at at the roots as well. The other roots. <clears throat> We know you can add a root of any polynomial uh, to any field, so just add it. And then, so once you do this, you will you will have. So let's just call this omega. You will have that your polynomial splits. So. Um, the moral of the story is it's easy to make polynomials split. If you can add one root, you can add all of them. Just keep adding roots. Um, and I just, I mean, I did some computations kind of for the sake of it because um, I didn't really need to. So, uh, so let F be a field. And um, um, we take a polynomial over it. And I'm going to define splitting field. You say an extension. is a splitting field if it's the if, if it's the field that makes that split um, so f splits into linear factors uh, this is just a constant it should be, it's going to be a, a constant in F, but who cares? Um, I mean, we might as well only be looking at, at monic polynomials. Uh, so if we say it's a splitting field, if if you have all the roots, it's R, R in E, and you have basically nothing else. Um, I guess you could add more stuff, but then we, we don't call it as a splitting field. So we also require that E is generated by these roots. Um, so I should say, um, so, so that's a splitting field example. Q, when you attach root two and you attach 
well, just neg root of negative three is the splitting field. Ugh. of uh, the polynomial x cubed minus two over q. <clears throat> so, um, and notice that it doesn't matter if you add the root of negative three or if you add the root of negative, um, Or if you add these other elements, it, it's just um, if you if you have one, you'll have the other. If you have the root of negative three, you can get in the field negative one plus root negative three over two. And if you have this number, just multiply by two and add one, you and you have root of negative three. And it's also the same as adding uh, as multiplying these. So there's a lot of ways to generate the same field. <clears throat> so, okay, I, I should be I should be saying a splitting field, uh, but nobody ever says that. We say the because splitting fields are are unique in a certain way, up to isomorphism. Uh, So we're about to prove that, um, but I mean, spoilers, they will be unique. So we, we can definitely, if you just give me a polynomial, I, I'm, I'm sure if you think of the splitting field and I think of the splitting field, then we're thinking of the same field of an isomorphic field. Um, okay, so let's just, um, Let's just get to it. <clears throat> so the first thing I should prove is that there's always a splitting field. So I'm going to show that it exists and it's unique, basically. Okay, so the splitting field exists. So really I only need to show that there's a polynomial, there's a there's a field that has all the all the roots. Um, so earlier today I've shown that um, every field has an algebraic closure. And that would be a possible proof, just take an algebraic closure take the field and then inside the algebraic closure, the splitting field is going to be a subfield of that. So the algebraic closure, take all the roots of F and take the field that they generate. And that's a splitting field. Uh, the problem, that's a big problem with this is that I haven't showed this theorem with the algebraic closure. And what I'm about to do is part of the proof of that theorem. So it doesn't really work kind of, I mean, it's accidentally a circular argument. So I'm just gonna uh, do it. So what I'm supposed to do is just show that you can keep adding roots. Um, so the proof, in words, the proof goes, if it doesn't split already, add a root and then see how it factors and then add a root and then you're eventually gonna be done. These kind of reasonings where you go, I make the thing smaller and I'm eventually gonna be done uh, are easier to write by induction. Um, because it's just, you don't have to explain um, what eventually done is. It's, that's what we call induction. So instead of, you know, instead of starting a polynomial of degree 15 and going down, you say, what happens if polynomial has degree one, degree two, and keep going up? You're gonna prove it for all polynomials anyway. So uh, let n be the degree of f we use induction. So what happens if n equals one? 
f already splits. Um, and what do you get when you add the one root? Uh, when you, you take f and you add uh, just a number that's already in f, you don't get anything new. So, so that's one step. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna not tell myself that I can fit the proof in there. All right, so every f has a splitting field. Uh, by induction on the degree. Okay, so what I need to do is add a root. Um, so um, I can I can add a root to any of any reducible polynomial because that's when you get a maximal idea on you get a field out of it. So just factor factor f um, factor f into irreducibles. So, um, I mean, I guess I could be done if, if F, um, if they all have the real one, <clears throat> then what am I doing? Um, I don't need to add anything to, to get the splitting field. So if they don't, so the other degree of G1, just reorder them. Say you have one of them, which is irreducible and has degree one. Uh, let E equals F adjoin alpha, where alpha is a root. Of G1. I mean, really, I mean, we know we know that every polynomial can be, you can add a root to it because uh, what you do is um, you do what I just said, you factor, you add a root to one of the reducible factors. Um, maybe I didn't need to repeat this. So now, um, I, so, So now we factor factor F over this new, this bigger field. Um, one of the factors is X minus alpha because alpha is a root. Um, Because it's a root of one, it's a root of G one, which makes it a root of its multiple. Uh, so, over over the bigger field, F is going to factor somehow. Uh, I have no idea what's happening with the factors. Just some might stay reducible, some might not. G one definitely acquires a new factor. Um, so I don't even know how many there are. Actually. Let's just call it F1. Um, so does F1 split already? Well, if it does, great. It probably doesn't, like like it happened in my example where you took your polynomial, you added the cubic root of two, and, and then it didn't split uh, because you were left with an irreducible factor. So uh, probably you're gonna need to keep going, but now, the degree of F1 is the degree of F minus one. So 
by the induction hypothesis, I already um, I've already proved it for all degrees smaller than n. Um, there exists a splitting field k of f1 over e. So f1 is, let's say it's f1, I'm just going to ignore. It is a product of linear factors. They're all in K. And also K is what you get when you take E and you attach all the roots. Uh, so, you know, normally here I would say, oh, keep going, keep going. But it's, it's just clear to say by induction, I already know this is done. Uh, so what happens with F if you put, um, this equation together with this one just plug in the what i just said f1 is uh, what you get is a product of linear factors and uh, k is well i just said it's e adjoin all the betas But also, E is what you get from F adjoining alpha. So when you add an element and then you add some more, this is the same as just adding all of them at once. And that's it. That's a splitting field. So you add a root, and then you do the whole splitting field. Awesome. Um, now, should I put a cut in here? I don't know. Uh, so I've shown that the splitting field exists. Now I have to show that it's um, that it's unique. So let me stop recording and decide what I'm going to do.